All right, in this exercise, we're being asked to convert the equation x squared plus y squared minus 4z squared equals 0 from rectangular form that it's currently in with the x, the y, and the z into spherical form that has a rho, theta, and phi instead of x, y, and z. So uh, you, you should know the drill by now. We've done a number of examples. What we're going to do is we're going to look at all the conversions that we've derived in previous videos and find some way to get the x, y's, and z's out of there and replace them with rho, theta, and phi instead. And, and sometimes there's more than one way to, to do this, but the, the main thing is to get the x's, y's, and z's converted to rho, theta, and phi in, in the shortest way possible. Um, so a lot of this just takes some practice and some thinking. Uh, like for example, when I look at this example, one thing that catches my eye is this reminds me a lot of number four, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. The only problem is, is that this is a minus four z squared, not a, not a plus. So it doesn't immediately work. So I have to think, how can I finagle this thing around? How can I shuffle some terms around to maybe get what I want? So I think I, I would do something like this. I would take x squared plus y squared. And why don't we just go ahead and move that 4z squared? It's a minus anyways. Let's go ahead and move it to the right-hand side. We'll write 4z squared. All right, now, um, I don't have a conversion just with x squared and y squared. I've got x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So what I think I'll do is I will add a z squared because I, I would really like an extra one, but you can't just add an extra one to the left without also adding an extra one to the right because we have to maintain that equality there. All right, but now the left-hand side is uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which I can convert to a row squared, and that's, that's really good. So we have row squared equals 5z squared. Now, a lot of students that I've had in the past would probably stop right here, say, hey, I got a row, and that's spherical, so we're done. But you have to remember with all these examples, you, you have to convert everything all the way. So if you're trying to convert to spherical form, but you still have a z in here, you're not done. So we have to also get rid of that z squared as well. So how can I get rid of a z and get instead rows, thetas, and phi's? Well, I see, obviously not number one because that doesn't have any z's. Obviously not number two either. Um, maybe three. Uh, I've already used number four. Definitely not number five. Six has a Z, but it's really kind of trapped in an arc cosine. It's very strange and there's no fees or anything like that. But I think number three might work because we have Z directly related to rho and phi, which is perfect. So let's take that Z out. So we'll have rho squared equals instead of five Z squared, we'll take that Z and replace it with rho cosine phi. And then I think we can square the rho and square the cosine. So we'll get rho squared equals five rho squared times cosine squared phi. But now we have a rho squared on both sides. And so as long as rho is not zero, we can, we can cancel these two guys, divide them from both sides. And we'll have one equals five cosine squared phi and so if you clean that up about as clean as you would want to make it you would say either cosine squared phi equals one-fifth which is probably the way we'll leave it uh, or you could say cosine phi equals uh, plus or minus root one-fifth, but that that with the radical I, I don't think I really want to introduce that. So anyways, I, I think this is sufficient right here And so what we've done is we've taken an equation that was written in rectangular form and Converted it into an equivalent equation now in spherical form using these different conversions over here on the left hand side